Hello, I would like to welcome to this short presentation on laser treatment of central serous choroid Let's start from disease characteristics and classification. It affects mainly young individuals with the mean age in fifth decade of life. It's more prevalent in males than females. CSTR belongs to a spectrum of pachycoroid disease, which involves increased choroidal thickness, impairment of choriocapillaries, presence of subretinal fluid, RPE alterations and leakage on FA and ACGA. It spontaneously resolves in majority of cases, however, it may persist for a longer period of time and then cause significant impairment of vision. It also might be complicated by development of CNV. Traditionally, it was divided into acute versus chronic cases depending on duration of the disease with the division at four or six months depending on the research. However, nowadays we try to use modern classification published just a year ago where the cases were defined or simple or complex depending on the area of RP alterations. There are different therapeutic options for CSTR starting from observation, some conservative therapies, among which mineral corticoid inhibitors like aplerenone have to be emphasized as having gained a large of attention. Anti-VEGF is effective only in cases complicated by the CNV. Now let's move to the laser treatment of CSTR. Classic laser photocoagulation was used before the onset of non-damaging retinal therapies. It was applied to the cases where the leakage point was located in a safe distance from the fovea. As the endpoint of this therapy was a retinal scar, it was recommended to wait for at least four months for spontaneous resolution on symptoms, and prompt treatment was recommended only in recurrent cases, especially when retinal damage was observed after, after previous episodes. Subtestial diode micropulse is a truly non-damaging retinal therapy that can be used with different laser wavelengths. What's common is the duty cycle that has been empirically set at 5% as the safe value. We use different spot diameter, pulse duration or laser power that can be calculated from the laser fluence. There are different approaches to treat treatment area, starting from minimal treatment that targets just the leakage point, through the SDOCT based treatment to panmacular treatment that mobilizes the large number of RPE cells in the posterior pole. Laser power can be applied in two different ways, by fixed parameters or titration. However, the second form of application bears the risk of overtreatment. I give you a few examples of laser protocols at the bottom of the slide. Clinical research has confirmed that total resorption of SRF is achieved in 40 to 80% of cases. We have to remember that average PCVA improvement though is only about one line on the Sneller chart in the chronic cases. We also know, it's very important, that better functional results are achieved in early application SDM without three to four months of delay. Photodynamic therapy has been used for the treatment of CSTR for almost 20 years now. Uh, it's a different philosophy of treatment than SDM because the target here is the choroid. We applicate it intravenously vertiporphin, which is a photosynthetizing drug, and then apply the laser. Uh, the vertiporphin used at the half dose or half fluence mode uh, if we compare it to the AMD treatment. The result is production of reactive oxygen species and temporary occlusion of choriocapillaries. The results of the treatments are very optimistic. It shows resolution of subretinal uh, fluid in 80 to 100 percent of cases. However, like in SDM, BCVA improvement in chronic cases is quite poor. It's up to two lines on the Snellen chart. When we compare PDT to SDM, generally reports uh, show the similar results, but one large trial, which is PLACE trial, that favors PDT, but not in the quality of life improvement. Again, good results are presented in acute cases of CSTR. I would like to conclude with the, my opinion that our approach to treatment of CSTR has to change. I think that we should treat those patients early without delay. And I believe that suppressor of micropulse as very cheap and very safe therapy should be considered a first line of treatment.
Thank you very much for your attention.